Well, the British aren't coming. Prime Minister David Cameron going to his parliament and getting voted down. His members of parliament saying they do not want Great Britain to be involved in the conflict with Syria. Some lawmakers want President Obama to do the same thing, to go to Congress and ask their permission as the Constitution requires. Here on what course of action he believes the U.S. ought to take is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who joins us live this morning. Senator, thanks a lot for joining us. What, can you sum Good up morning. what the point of this apparently imminent attack on Syria is? What's our objective here? Well, that's the real question. I think we have no strategic objective. I don't think it'll change the course of the war. And in fact, one of the things that troubles me is that we've already announced in advance, well, it's not going to be too much of an attack. It's not going to last too long. And we're not for regime change. I've had conversations with the administration, both publicly and privately. And this sounds like what their objective is. Their objective is stalemate. And I've told them, frankly, I'm not sending my son, your son, or anyone else's son to fight if your goal or your objective is stalemate. That's not what Americans are about. So the idea is that the president gave his word that there was this red line, he described, the use of weapons of mass destruction. Syria may apparently has crossed that line, and so we need to act. Is that the rationale? It sounds to me like saving face because he's made a promise, so he's going to follow through with his promise. That's why you ought to be very careful about drawing lines in the sand or red lines, because now he feels that he looks weak to both his colleagues in the United States as well as his international colleagues. But I don't think that's enough reason to go to war. The Constitution is very explicit on this. When you go to war, Congress must authorize this. Both the president and the vice president, once upon a time, before they became in power, understood this. As a senator, Barack Obama said that no president should unilaterally go to war without the authority of Congress. I still believe that. It's one of the things that I liked about the president when he ran. Of course, I didn't vote for the president, but there were a few things I liked, and that was one of them. And he seems to have forgotten that now, and I think that's disappointing. So it seems like this former constitutional law professor will just ignore that constitutional requirement and move without approval from Congress. Is Congress going to put up with that? What exactly can the Congress do if the president does that? We shouldn't, and we could come back into session on our own, and we could send a rebuke and a restraining order to him. The British Parliament has, and they seem to be obeying their separation of powers. You know, the Vice President, Joe Biden, was very specific on this, too. Both yes. the President and the Vice President were outspoken and talked about the separation of powers and why this sort of allows emotions to cool and often keeps us from going into war. Right. You know, 80 percent of the American people want Congress to vote on this. Yeah. A rebuke and a restraining order. We'll be, we'll be waiting for those. Senator, thanks a lot for joining us this morning.